I got some awesome new goodies, so let's see what I got. Okay, let's open some of the boxes and see what's inside. You tape these all together. Let's start with the smallest first. That's a little fella. I believe that is the GMU 11 and I believe that's going to get mounted off in a wingtip left right side not sure where yet and I think the GMU is the um, magnetometer which basically uh, sends data to the system about uh, pitch and roll. I could be wrong. I'm just learning this stuff, so don't beat me up too much in the comments. In fact, if you have a better description as to what this does, put it below or link me to a video so I can learn a little bit more. All right, anti-static bags for all electronic devices. Alright, this one is the uh, GAD 29B and from what I understand this allows, uh, not so much useful for me right now while I'm just doing the uh, G5 installation, but this is what's going to allow communication between the G5 and the uh, GNC 355 that I intend to install for my new GPS and uh, NAVCOM, primary NAVCOM. So again, nothing beautiful to look at. They're really simple little devices. I gotta say I'm, I'm shocked as to how little this thing weighs. It can't be but a few ounces, but uh, still a vitally important part. So nothing flashy fancy there. But uh, in fact, I'm not sure if that'll even be installed right away or if we'll wait and install this when we do the GPS upgrade. Um, I guess it depends on where it needs to be installed and whether we want to access that area one time or two times. So, all right, here's the big babies. So. Okay, registration, certificates, um, you need an STC to have these installed, so I assume this is that kind of paperwork, what is it, uh, I don't know, STC, STC uh, 8130, something like that. Um, like I said, I'm still new to all this, so uh, if you want to correct me, do it in the comments below. If you want to add some information I'm omitting, add it to the comments below, or send me a link to... Uh, uh, more information because I'm constantly wanting to learn more about aviation. So, all right, connector kit looks like uh, harness ends, and I'm assuming the pins and whatever you need to construct your harnesses. Um, some sort of bracketry uh, adapter plates. So. Maybe made for a couple different models to uh, adapt the G5s themselves into the uh, old instrument holes. And connector kit, nine pin with a can terminal. So, yep, looks like some more 
terminal ends, wiring pins to uh, make harnesses, some sort of an adapter. And what's this? Installation kit. So looks like some mounting hardware. That looks like some sort of pins. Yep. Uh, looks like another connector kit, nine pins. So maybe for the other end of whatever that attaches to. And oh, I believe this is the backup battery. These last up to four hours if you were to lose power or instrumentation. And not instrument, but uh, if you were to lose power, they should be able to give you your data for up to four hours and get to a safe place. Okay, here's the good one. Ta-da! Somehow you'd think they're going to be a little bigger when you spend this much money on them. I mean, this is what? $2,500, nearly $3,000 for the riches. I don't know. <laughs> Not much bigger than a cell phone, really, just thicker. Uh, on the back, you've got your pedo. Uh, you've got your, uh, you can have the GPS antenna on this because uh, it does have an internal GPS. And then just your nine pin connector, and that's it. It seems to be that simple, but uh, I'm sure it's actually a lot more complicated because I don't know where those nine wires go. I'm hoping somebody else does. It's got to be in the manuals, but um, yeah, pretty small, simple little item, and I'm excited to have them in the plane. I'm going to open the other box too because I bought them as a pair, and one's going to be the uh, uh, the PFD, and the other one's going to be the uh, uh, the DGHSI, but. Um, some places I see that they're identical all the way down to the serial number and the part number. But then again, why are they priced differently? Unless the um, some of the components may become different between one and the other and the unit itself might be identical. If you know the answer to that, please uh, let me know in the comments below. I'm going to keep looking on that. So I believe these parts are identical. Accessories might be different depending upon the application or the installation. So, all right, um, let me open the other one, double check that, and then we'll talk about uh, why I'm doing this and what I expect to achieve by doing this. Yeah, it looks like there's a whole lot less in this second uh, package. So, uh, just the battery backup and what appears to be uh, one of the connector assemblies, and that's that. So, I guess that kind of answers that question, but again, I'm looking for more information. So, if you know for sure if this is identical to the other one, then uh, just let me know.
that would be great. Thank you. Okay, the number one reason for me going with this investment is to get some modern indicators instruments into the aircraft. Um, you know, the, the normal six pack that's in the plane that hasn't changed a whole lot in decades and decades. And the glass instrumentation, the digital instrumentation, uh, from what I understand is it's faster. It gives you more real time data where you're not waiting for uh, the diaphragms to, to, to even out for your, you know, your altitude and your uh, vertical speed indicator, your airspeed, everything should be a lot more instantaneous. And that's a good thing. Um, the other idea is that by doing this, I am having backup attitude indicators. So if the first GF5 fails, which is the, the PFD, the primary flight display, if that fails, I can take the DG slash HSI, uh, swap that over to take over the duties of the first. And that's cool. Um, not to mention uh, the battery backups, four hours, should get me just about anywhere I need to go. I at least get on the ground safely. Mm -hmm. PFD, your primary flight display, has the attitude indicator, which is front and center, the whole background display. Then you have your airspeed indicator tape, which is off to the left. You have an altitude indicator tape, which is off to the right. You have your vertical speed indicator, uh, which is off to the far right along that edge. Uh, you have a heading indicator at the very, very top of the display. And then you have your uh, turn and slip indicator at the bottom of the PFD. Uh, so essentially you have your full six pack instrumentation in a small box about this big and you're looking in less places. So you can glance down, get your eyes back up outside the cockpit and enjoy flying and quickly scan back and up. And you're, you're not bouncing around and, and developing these, uh, these uh, scan patterns. Everything's where you need it quick and easy. I don't think life should get much better than that. Um, until, of course, maybe in the spring when I add the GPS. Now, when I add the GPS, uh, the second G5 is no longer going to be just a DG. It has full HSI features, so uh, it works with the GPS. I can be able to pull up uh, 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 VOR indicators. I'd be able to pull up uh, GPS indicators. A uh, whole slew of other toys and features get added on at that point. I will not be getting all possible features, uh, advantages of these though, because uh, my plane uh, 7965 November does not have an autopilot. Mm -hmm. At some point, I would like to get a plane with autopilot, but for now, I think it's in my best interest to do as much stick and rudder flying as I possibly can. So that's my plan. That's what I'm shooting for, and hopefully by spring I have it all installed, all finished, and hopefully I have my certificate by then and I'm on to my IFR training with these new devices. So I hope you found that slightly interesting, maybe a little bit informative. Um, like I said, I'm still learning, so uh, definitely not all inclusive as far as features and functionality of these things go. I'm just trying to give you guys an update on what seemed to be interesting based on the conversations that were inspired from my introduction to uh, my Cherokee 180 video. So if you like these videos, please give it a thumbs up, uh, subscribe to the channel, and share them with your friends, and have a great day.